Yo, what go on internet, Kai Linux there. So, I don't know about you, but I have a secondary hard drive that I use to install my Steam games on. And one of the reasons why I chose to do this is because sometimes I distro hop, and if I distro hop, I want to still have access to all of those giant games that I spent many hours downloading over the course of, you know, however many years. So if you want to learn how to do this, stay tuned. What we're going to be doing is auto mount, uh, setting the drive to be auto mounted every time we reboot and also setting Steam to use that secondary hard drive as its default Steam library location. After that, we're going to kind of, this is kind of like an optimization of Steam video or how to optimize Steam and make sure things work uh, as, as great as they can. The second thing we're going to do is ensure that Steam maintains a pretty consistent download speed whenever you're downloading games. I've run into this weird problem where Steam is extremely slow at downloading or the download rate fluctuates. And it's super strange because I'm on a gigabit connection and, a, and connected to Ethernet. The issue is IPv6. So let's jump into it. All right. So the first thing we want to do is open up our file manager. For those of you out there, we're going to be mounting our secondary drive the simple way, right? So I'm going to open my file manager, which is Thunar. And just like if you're familiar with a Windows or a Mac, when you plug in a flash drive or you have another hard drive plugged in, you'll see your devices in your left or right pane, depending on what OS you're using. So mine is called storage SSD. That is my secondary hard drive. It is already mounted. Yours may be grayed out. If it is grayed out, you want to click on it so that it's mounted. Now that's the easy way to go about doing this. There is another method of doing this, which involves the command line, but we'll get into that in a later video. I want to keep this as simple as possible for most. So now that that has been mounted, we can close this window and now we can open up terminal. So terminal is open. Now from here, what you want to do is, or what we're going to do is grab the UUID or the unique identifier for that secondary device. And to do that, we're going to run the sudo block ID command. And there is the UUID for that storage device. So we're going to just copy up unto the quote. We don't need all this additional information because it's unnecessary. So start at the beginning of UUID and end at the end quote. We're going to copy that. All right. I'm going to open up a secondary terminal and then run Vim. You can use any text editor you like. I just happen to like Vim. And we're going to paste that in. All right, so there's our UUID. Uh, we also want to get rid of these quotes. So just going to get rid of those. All right, so now we have our UUID and we are set in that department. So we're going to jump back to the first window. And from here, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to visit the proc directory. Now, the proc directory isn't really a directory. It's more of a file system. Kind of strange to explain but it basically loads things up on the fly. So these files are generated when like you plug in a USB device or uh, you have a new hard drive in, uh, added to your system. I, I highly, highly recommend you read up on proc and how the proc file system works. It's pretty interesting stuff. I don't know it in depth myself, so I don't want to, you know, pretend as if I'm some sort of expert. I've only briefly read up on it and have a pretty modest understanding of it. <laughs> so check it out for yourself. Um, and I'm hoping to learn more as well. So what we want to do is find our mounted devices in the proc file system right now. And the way to do that is to cat, I'm going to catenate the uh, proc, excuse me, proc mounts. So you're going to type cat space slash proc slash mounts and the enter key. And now we're going to look for our same device, the storage SSD device, which is my, you know, that's the name of my particular storage device. Yours may be named something differently. If you are unsure of what you named your device, or if you haven't named your 
uh, secondary SSD, you can just look for the device name, which is probably, it's going to be like SDA or SDB, SDC, etc. Mine is SDB1. So that's this guy down here. And all you're going to do is copy its path all the way down to the zero. Now we're back in our text editor and we're going to just paste that thing. Keep doing that. I'm going to paste that in there. All right. And now we have our full line that we're going to use in our fstab file. Now we're going to play, we're placing this line in our fstab file this way. The system knows we want this mounted when we reboot. We're going to just copy this line up here. All right, and then we are going to open up the fstab file. So vim etsy fstab, and there it is. So we're going to jump down to this line here, and then we are going to add in our line that we copied from the other window or from the text editor. All right, so that line has been added, and now we can write. Oh, okay, so you see this? This is important. You see down here, this error message, read only, option is set. I need to add an exclamation point to override. The thing is, adding the bang symbol or exclamation point is not gonna override this because I forgot to run Vim um, as the super user. So, this is a good lesson, take a note of this. So I'm gonna actually quit. All right, so now we're gonna actually do sudo Vim Etsy FS, um, fstab, excuse me. And the reason for this is because the Etsy folder is in our root directory and you need to be root in order to access uh, that directory and the file in there to make changes to the files uh, inside the root directory. So sudo vim etsy fstab. And now we're gonna do that again. And I kinda want that a little lower. All right, two lines. And we should add a little comment here just so we know what we're doing. So this is for our storage. And then we will do write and it's written. So now it's saved and then we can quit. Awesome. So once we reboot from here, our storage device, our secondary hard drive should be mounted. Now, you can reboot if you're ready, uh, and then you can come back to the video or you can continue watching. So here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna close both terminal windows because we no longer need them. And now we're gonna open up Steam. Okay, so we have Steam up. And now from here, we're going to go into our Steam settings. And then we're going to go down to uh, downloads. And then from downloads, we're going to click on Steam library folders, right? Whoops. All right. So if you see here, this is my default Steam library folder. This is on my main hard drive. This is not on my secondary drive. So we want to change this. So down here, you're going to click on add library folder. And then it should be in media. And then under your username and then the name of your storage device. And again, if you already had a Steam library installed, it'll be right here and you're gonna select that. If you didn't, you can use your storage device to create a new one. But the point of this is to get the games that you already had installed on the secondary hard drive. So we're gonna hit select. Sorry about the noise. And we're going to right click on this new location and we're gonna make this the default folder. So now any new games we install will be installed here as opposed to the Steam directory in our home directory. We can hit close and then hit okay. And now we're good to go. So if, I don't know if you noticed, but East wasn't installed. It was just being highlighted, it was grayed out, but now, whoops. Now you can see, you can see it's white and I can play it. The install button's gone because Steam has detected that, oh, this is already installed on the secondary drive. So boom, that's 
that's knocked out of the park. We don't have to worry about that. Now, download speed. That is the other issue that I have found in Steam uh, as of late. And I've learned that this is a result of Steam not working well with, uh, what is it, IPv6 or IP ver uh, IP version 6. I don't really know the details um, from what I've read. People are just upset that this is even a thing. There should be something that is fixed. But don't stress it. Quick and simple fix involving Grub. So we can move to a new one. We can uh, open up Terminal. All right. Now, and in Terminal, what you want to do is open your Grub file, which is found in Etsy default. In the Etsy directory, in the default directory, you'll find Grub. You want to open that up in your text editor of choice. Make sure you're root when you're doing this. We're going to do sudo vim. You can use any text editor you like. I'm just using vim. And it's Etsy default grub. Okay. Now from here, you're going to see two very specific lines that we're going to be changing. We're going to jump down. The first line is grub command line Linux default, where it says quiet splash. Now you can remove the quiet splash if you want to. So for me, I don't mind having quiet splash on. I don't mind seeing the graphics. So what I'm going to do is just add the line that is necessary, which is to disable IPv6. Now that line is IPv6, IPv6 disable equals one. And I spelled disable wrong. There we go. IPv6 disable equals one. And then we're going to add the same thing on the line below. Yank this and then paste it there. Whoops. Make sure you have your quotes, ladies and gents. All right. Okie doke. So again, you can get rid of quiet splash if you want to see what gets loaded when your system is starting up, or you can leave quiet splash on so that you can see your fun Ubuntu or Zubuntu or Manjaro or whatever distro you're using, um, see the logo and the loading symbol. So now we are going to write and quit and that's it. So to write and quit, it's uh, colon W and Q. W for right, Q for quit. Oh yeah, one more really important thing. Whenever you make changes to Grub, don't forget after you've hit write and quit and you've saved your update, make sure you go back into terminal and you run sudo update Grub. This is a must do if you want your changes to be saved once you reboot. And there you go. All right, so now that's done. So from here, all you would do is reboot your computer. And then once you load back up into your system, you can go into Steam, try and download a game and see if your download speed has changed. If it hasn't, well, then I, d I don't know what the issue is for you. <laughs> it might be something else. Um, but if it has, then that's great. And again, this is only for those folks out there who are having a very strange experience with download speeds fluctuating or just having uh, zero, um, zero bits of data downloaded at all when trying to download a new game or an old game. So yeah, that's about it. That about covers it. Uh, apologies if this was too rambly or, you know, a bit off the cuff, it's kind of late. And, uh, I was working on doing this right now for myself and I was like, I should record this. So hope that this has been helpful to you guys. Anyway, with all that being said, this has been Kyle Linux and remember no matter what destroy you use out of many one Linux, give thanks, peace.